Okay, I asked you to do the first five on this sheet, projectiles fired at an angle. Okay, so number one, a cannonball is fired at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal and an initial velocity of 200 meters per second. Okay, so it's going up. And it's coming down over here. So VI is 200 meters per second, and the angle is 45 degrees. So this will be your VIX. This will be your VIY. Separating, it, separating out of your givens in the X direction and the Y direction. Um, so we know VIX is VI cos theta, which we could actually find. We know AX is zero. We know VIY is VI sine theta, which we could actually find, and that's up. And we know AY is 9.81 meters per second squared, and that's down. Okay, and the questions are, how long is it in the air? What is the maximum height, and what is the range? Okay, so there's a trick. It looks like, like we, so we're looking for delta dx and delta t, and we're looking for delta dy max and delta t. So it might look like we aren't given enough, but the trick with ground to ground is to look at the halfway point. And when you look at the halfway point, the vy up here is zero. Okay, and so we can then find our time up because we have VIY, we have AY, and if we treat the VI, the VY up here as our VF, we can find our time. So AY is equal to VFY minus VIY over delta T. And if we're looking at up, then the VFY goes to zero, and this becomes TU. So delta TU will be equal to negative VIY is really just VI sine theta over AY. And so we can fill our numbers in. So negative 200 meters per second sine of 45. And that negative comes from the subtracting in the equation, right? But then AY needs to go in as negative 9.81 because it's acting downward while the... Um, projectile is trying to go upward, okay? And so you'll get your TU, so what is it, 0 0.707 times 200, and then divide it by 9.81. So TU is 14.416 seconds, so when you double that to get your total time, it'll be 28. 83, 832 seconds. That's the answer to part A. Part B wants to know maximum height. So maximum height is delta dy max. So delta dy max is equal to vi delta tu. You have to use the half time to get the maximum height because that's when the maximum height occurs. Okay, so delta dy max is equal to VI sine theta. Uh, so what was VI? 200 meters per second sine of 45. And that gets multiplied by 14.416 seconds plus 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 14.416 seconds squared. Delta dy max equals. Now, if you don't round at all, um, the first term will actually be half the second term, uh, double the second term, sorry. So times 200 times the sine of 45. So the first term is 2,038. 0.735984 meters, and the second term would be 1,019.367992 meters, and you end up with the delta dy max 
of 1,019.367992 meters, roughly. I hope that's what I put on the answer sheet. Well, maybe not all of those. Oh, did I, did I get 1,020? Hmm, maybe I rounded in here. All right, and then part C, that's part B. Part C wants to know delta dx, the range, and it's vix delta t plus one-half ax delta t squared. This goes to zero. Delta dx then is equal to vi cos theta, and the t we use is the total because the range is in the total time. So 200 meters per second, cos of 45, and you're multiplying that by the total time, which was 28.832, yeah, 32 seconds. Okay, and so this one will be rounded a little, times two times. Uh, 4,000, wow, my answers are off, or my calculator is off tonight, 4,077.47. Makes me think I'm using something wrong here, but I'm not. So I'm not sure what I was, if I was awake when I was doing the answers on the sheet. Okay. Uh, that was number one. Number two. A ball is thrown from center field to home plate at an angle, being caught at exactly the same height. So again, it's a ground-to-ground -ground projectile. Okay. Uh, it only takes three seconds to travel a horizontal distance. So in the x direction, we don't know vix. We know ax is 0. It's telling us the horizontal distance, delta dx, is uh, 60 meters. And it's telling us the time is 3 seconds. In the y direction, we don't know viy. We know ay is 9.81 meters per second squared down. And we know delta t total is 3 seconds. And the question wants to know how far in the air did the ball rise? You're looking for delta dy max. To get delta dy max, you need your viy. You can get your viy by looking at just the up again and doing our little trick. Ay is equal to vfy minus viy over delta t u. This goes to 0. Uh, this time I'm solving for VIY, so VIY is going to equal negative AY delta TU. So VIY is going to equal negative, negative 9.81 meters per second squared, and the time up is 1.5 seconds. And you get a VIY of 14.5. Meters per second. Once you have that, now you can do your delta dy max is equal to viy delta t one half ay delta t squared, where again the t has to be tu. If you forget and put the full time in here, you're going to get a height of zero because at the full time it's back on the ground again. So it's going to be 14.715 meters per second times the time up, 1.5 seconds, plus 1 half, negative 9.81 meters per second squared, times 1.5 seconds squared. So you get a delta dy max. Again, second term should be half the first term. The first term is 22.0725 meters, minus brackets, 4.905 times 2.25. Second term is 11.03625 meters. And lo and behold, when you subtract them, you get 11.03625. Uh, so use this as the check, right? If you don't get the second term half the first term, then it means you screwed up your time. Okay? Number three, we're going to run at a time. Number three is the muzzle velocity of a cannon has an upward component of 490 meters per second and a horizontal component of 600 meters per second. I'm giving you the components this time. So here's my VI, my VIX, 
and my VIY. 